What's up, guys? Welcome back to our tour of the various countries here for Birthright from Second Ed D and D. Um, again, as we are covering the series here, this is our first section of the series where we're covering the nations of the southern coast. Um, so we have Ilian for you guys today, um, and again, this is a part of our uh, series where we're going to cover all the different uh, actual physical territories, but also some of the other minor factions like guilds and temples and so on. Um, for uh, again, the various Anuirian factions in Birthright. And then we'll move on to some of the expansions and stuff like that. So we have all kinds of birthright content coming for you guys. And again, uh, for those not familiar with it, um, we'll have um, videos that will cover sort of the background of the setting and some of the differences and what makes this really a cool and unique setting and something that you can still easily port over into your games of 5th Ed if you want to bring it into 5th Ed. Or uh, it's also been ported into, I think, 3rd, 3rd, 5 basically everything that's come after 2nd Ed. So, um, or if you know you want to just play it in the original. But anyway, um, so our series here, we focus on the countries and um, just a little bit of a background on them and then some of the maybe some tips and tricks on you know what to look out for, um, whether you're the player or the DM and so on and so forth. So anyway, Ilian is a country that is recommended for players. So that means, uh, you know, a PC could uh, take this country on and run it. Um, it is essentially alignment neutral. Um, and it, in many ways, because it is also just a one province uh, country or territory here. Um, so in that sense, it uh, kind of by necessity has to uh, be true neutral. neutral. Uh, sorry, We'll take a look at the map again of the southern coast just so you can see kind of why um, that is. But basically, it's sort of sandwiched in between two uh, countries there. Fortunately, those two are essentially friendly. Um, it's uh, the the country that this was a former part of, uh, Dimed, um, which we'll cover in another video. But um, that is really the, the major enemy of it here. But anyway, let's jump in here. So again, it's a one province country. It is a essentially a very large city um, with a little bit of surrounding territory. So in some ways, it's almost like the little uh, mini Switzerland of the south coast here. Um, so you really do have to sort of pick your um, political position quite carefully. This is also an interesting country just because it is run by a uh, mage. Um, so uh, that is, you know, if you want to run it as this PC, a lot of times people will um, essentially become that uh, PC's successor. Some of the other accessories that came out for this uh, the setting, um, which we'll also cover in detail as we get to them, and there is one for Ilian. Basically, um, they're called like the, the player secrets of so and so country, which gives you uh, additional information. And a lot of times, uh, basically, the the region has either been uh, has stepped down or passed away or something like that, and you basically take the reins of the country. But you do have the option of running this uh, particular named region, which makes um, some of the uh, sort of starting off uh, a little bit easier just because you have set characters. So um, we have Ilian again. It's a level 7 province, very highly developed. Um, the law is entirely controlled by uh, your character here, which is a Roger or Roger, depending on how you want to pronounce his name, Aglandier. Um, so, and again, he is a wizard. Um, so you control 100% of the law in your city. There are no sources really available. It's a level 0 source just because most of the magical energy has been sort of uh, tapped out of the country there um, uh, and used up. So the, basically the, the concept with this is with the, the stat here, um, the higher the first number, generally the lower the second number. The first is kind of like population and development or civilization there. The second one reflects like the magical energy that's still left in the land. So um, And so with this one, um, he has to draw most of his magical sources from neighboring territories that do have, um, that are in general a little bit less settled. So, um, so RA stands for, again, your character. Then on the temple side, you basically have sort of a little bit of a competition uh, between two computers competing churches, you have the impregnable heart of Halen, um, which is again the uh, sort of major, one of the major uh, it's a it's a, one of the major sects. Uh, let me phrase this correctly, of sort of the um, the major god um, uh, of of the the setting here for the Anuirians at least, um, and uh, that uh, and again we'll cover the. The, uh, the smaller factions, again, in a separate video. But um, that is run by Hubert uh, Armienden. Uh, again, we're probably butchering some of these pronunciations just because this uh, setting does also come with some unique pronunciations. Um, and then ETN is the Eastern Temple of Nesirie, um, another sort of smaller goddess, but um, and fairly evenly balanced there, although the uh, Imperial Temple does have a little bit of an advantage there on um, that. So you have that little bit of competition between those two, although um, not... Um, you don't really have to worry about like a religious war, at least initially in your your country. The guild activity is 100% controlled by um, 
E-H, which is El Hadid. Uh, he runs the Port of Call Exchange. Um, and then again, your sources, it's a level zero source, just so you have one, but it is run by you. So the regent is Roger or Roger Aglandier. Um, he is a only a level three wizard, so um, uh, and he has a, a minor bloodline there. Um, and he is himself neutral good, though. Um, so, uh, and a little bit of his background here, right? He was an exceptional commoner once, a trusted advisor and apprentice to the blooded count before him, Morin Aglandier. However, he did not descend from the ancient bloodlines. Uh, he never felt so astonished as the morning he woke up to discover he had inherited the old man's bloodline, his royal name, and the free county of Ilion. So, um, so that's a little bit of his background there. Um, his current sort of way of ruling here, he uh, rules wisely and uh, well, doing his best not to make the mistakes of the regents around him. Um, so neither ambitious nor proud, he's willing to admit his faults. His people enthusiastically support him for he keeps their tax, or sorry, keeps their loyalty high and their taxes low. Um, so he claims Ilian is neutral, a statement that strays a bit from the truth. Um, so yeah, no one's necessarily going to be 100% neutral. It's just kind of impossible. But again, we'll take a look at the uh, map towards the end of the video just to kind of also pinpoint why he kind of has to at least act in that capacity. Um, so if you're looking for a country that is uh, like you want to be militarily focused or like f try and expand your territory physically by taking over your neighbors and stuff like that, this this is not the country for you. So this one is definitely I wouldn't put this as like on a scale of like easy to, to play um, and jump into. This is definitely going to be a little bit more advanced. It's going to require some subtlety because the way you're going to uh, essentially gain influence and power is by keeping your economy strong and making some profit off of that, even though you don't run the guild activity, but just ruling wisely and well and sort of being a, uh, almost like a, again, with your neutral status, status like a, almost like a power broker or meeting ground between rivals or sort of just, you know, using your status to, um, um, as, as a neutral country to um, make some money and influence off of that. Um, that being said, there, there's, there could be room, of course, um, if the situation arises where you could um, work your way towards other territories and things like that, but obviously other things have to happen there. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, he is good uh, friends with rulers of both Meduir and Roeson. We've covered Roeson already in another video. Take a look at our one on Medur. Um, that's coming up soon as well. Um, but those are, again, are your immediate neighbors because, as it says here, without their tolerance, his domain wouldn't exist, right? Roeson's definitely a little bit more militarily inclined um, and the largest of these three um, the former territories of uh, Diamed. Meadow Ear is a theocracy, which we'll cover next, but that's a very a fairly small country with only three provinces. Um, but um, yeah, he's just kind of sandwiched in between the two there. Um, so still, the nonpartisan illusion persists. So other rulers use the free county of Ilion as a neutral meeting spot. Regents have forged numerous treaties there. And that's where you can really, again, play that role up. So, um, you know, you can essentially be, um, like I said, sort of the, the, the Swiss... Uh, mini Swi Switzerland of, of this uh, this particular part of the setting. So um, on the lieutenants, um, I believe, yeah, he does have one that uh, already comes with the country, essentially, uh, or existing person uh, as an NPC here. So despite his many good qualities, he isn't really the trusting sort. So he only has one lieutenant, that's his daughter and heir, um, already named as the heir, Lady Elien. Um, she is a priest of Nasirie, which, um, you know, if we look at the temple situation, right, that is... Um, uh, where she belongs to, so that could be some potential issues there, um, depending on how the um, DM wants to um, uh, play that role there, um, and uh, potential any problems there, uh, the religious side. So Ilion is a, the country itself, right, is a single province with a rating of 7-0, so the capital is naturally the free city of Ilion, uh, located at the mouth of the Adele River. Um, it does have a rather impressive castle as well, all, also raised up to level 7 um, in the center of town. So that being said, you don't really have much in the way of a standing army, but, um, you know, um, and a, a rival could certainly, you know, besiege the town, but um, that's uh, a tough nut to crack. Um, and again, we'll, we'll cover rules for sieges and stuff all uh, in a separate series of videos where we talk about, you know, how to play the 
ruling the country part of the, the game, um, if you're into that as well. Um, so uh, we have the castle in the main town. None of the other, uh, none of the several other towns that dot the province approach the size of the free city. Yeah. I mean, it's just the one province. And, you know, when we cover the Player Secrets book, you'll kind of see it like a, a nicely drawn um, version of the whole province just to show you that there are some other smaller towns there. But really, uh, you know, it's, it's the main city that uh, uh, where the action is, basically. So the, some other important NPCs that you'll want to take note of and either work with and or against or try and, um, you know, just deal with them depending on what the DM decides to throw at you. But um, there is a bit of a sort of underground trade war kind of running across the southern coast here too. So um, and El Hadid is definitely in the thick of it. So the trade of Ilian falls under the management of Gilder El Hadid. So he's just a, he's a minor thief, level three, but um, he is lawful evil. So keep that in mind. He's a Kanasi uh, trader. So, um, and Kanasi is basically... Uh, sort of the more Middle Eastern culture that is um, kind of in the southeastern part of the continent. So that's a whole other series of videos, but that's definitely down the road. Um, so he has moved over into the west here, and again, the former Anuirian Empire. Um, so uh, again, a Kanasi trader who makes his activities seem above suspicion, so he tries to act legit on the surface. But of course, um, appearing completely honest in itself indicates suspicious activities. So Aglandier, the only known mage in Ilian, ties his magical holdings closely to the Arabanian. Again, that's that forest that kind of dominates this uh, the south uh, here, and especially the southeast. So a little bit in Roasone, but... Um, uh, mo mainly in Medu or yeah, uh, sorry, uh, a little bit in Rosone, mostly in Aranway, but he also um, has a little bit of his source uh, sources laid out in Meduir. So he uh, essentially depends on uh, his neighbors for um, his magical sources, so that you can basically um, perform realm magic, which is uh, again pretty impressive and a, a unique feature to the setting. So basically, you can cast spells that affect like entire provinces. So in in that sense, you can buff your own province, for, for example, or harm multiple provinces and an enemy's uh, provinces, and so on and so forth. Um, so a little bit more on the description here. So uh, like the terrain of surrounding kingdoms, uh, Ilian's rolling grasslands and small ranges of hills are extensively farmed. Breeders uh, prize their cattle, um, so that's where a lot of the money is at. Uh, but again, the Gilder kind of runs most of that, so you might, um, you know, depending on what's going on there, you might try to make some inroads there if you want to more directly control your economy, or you could, um, you know, bump up the taxes a little bit, but that might um, bring down the uh, your popularity a little bit. Um, so this point has given rise to several common derogatory remarks about the Ilianese, uh, the kindness of which refers to them as dung slingers. <laughs> the ranchers of Ilian sue their wounded pride with all that money they're stacking up. So, you know, they, people can call them whatever they want, but um, you, you basically have, like, uh, the, the best of the best in cattle there. Um, a small piece of the Arabanian crosses the southern part of the county, so just a teeny bit, um, as lush and beautiful as in Arenway. The small town of Enier on the edge of the Straits of uh, Arel at the mouth of the Spider River caters to wealthy travelers who wish to enjoy the Arabanian and war the warm waters of the Straits. It's renowned uh, across anywhere as a scenic place for the elite to gather and relax unless the fog has rolled in off the water. So, and that's it. So it's uh, one of the shorter descriptions. A lot of the bigger, more important countries in that sense usually get a, a essentially a double page description. So again, nothing is mentioned in the way of like standing armies. You really don't um, have any currently. Uh, that being said, you know, it's a, it's a large province, so you could raise some troops if, you know, defense becomes necessary. But, you know, really you're going to work most of your sort of magic here, pun intended, through uh, diplomacy, being smart with your taxes and keeping your people happy um, and just finding ways to, um, you know, benefit off of the realm magic that you can cast. You do want to keep an eye on uh, where your sources are at just in case uh, neighboring countries rule those provinces up and essentially diminish the magic energy uh, that's still available in those provinces because that will directly impact you. So, um, by and large, you're not really in too serious of a competition with any other rival mages, although there is... Uh, again, the other uh, competition uh, in uh, Arenwe, um, and we'll we'll talk about um, Meduir when we get there. Um, and there's a little bit of competition in Rosone as well. So you just want to be careful of that. And again, not trying to get yourself into too many conflicts. Uh, if you're actually running this guy, right, he's only a level three wizard. So um, a lot of the other heavy hitters in the south coast are um, much higher level. So you want to certainly be careful there. But, you know, you can, uh, again, as it says here, sort of play up your neutrality, but you can still sort of run your own agenda as long as you're keeping any um, ambitions kind of disguised for you. So like I said, it's not, um, it can be a very fun country to play, but it's not necessarily like playing on easy mode either um, just because you, you just have the one province, right? You don't, um, 
you don't have massive armies, so that's it's not like an easy go-to to do that. You would have to march across friendly territories anyway, or uh, at least theoretically friendly territories if they would allow it to um, do that. That being said, if your either of your neighbors were invaded or needed assistance, you could uh, you know provide some unexpected support potentially in that uh, area as well. So you basically just want to be useful to your neighbors, and because uh, again, they kind of tolerate your existence there. Um, you know, and that being said, you can kind of turtle up a little bit as well in that sense to, um, you know, if you were attacked at level seven castles, pretty, uh, solid. So, um, you might be able to hold out for a while until maybe some allies could relieve you. Um, it is on the coast as well. So you would want to look potentially into forging some other, uh, trade routes there. You just want to be careful of, again, uh, the El Hadid's activity there and, um, not to maybe, um, irritate him to the point where he's scheming against you personally as well. So just some things to think about there. But uh, overall, Ilion is a fun one in the South and um, certainly a great one to ally with if you do need magical support if you're running one of the other countries uh, in the area. So hope you guys have enjoyed our little look here at Ilion. Um, leave us a comment if you uh, have played with the country and your thoughts on that or if you played against them or, you know, maybe there were like a fellow PC was running it or just, you know, uh, any experience that you've had with it. Be uh, happy to hear from you guys and we'll talk about it. Um, leave us a like and a subscribe if you could as well. It definitely helps out the channel. Um, thanks so much again for stopping by, guys. Hope you have a good one. We'll see you in the next review.